Hey, what's up guys? It's T-Bone here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. In today's episode, I'll be going over some cards which you can use to try and get some good damage in this event. And I'm also going to talk about cards which I've looked through for ideas. Basically, with this deck, you'll want to supplement with some gem spawners if you have them, and these are the cards I like. Volcanic Quildrak, Fireflight Thoth, Infernal Squall, Alex, Stellar Rabbit, Blazing Argoli Polykev, Ra and Soul Thresher are the feature card alternatives if you don't have the ones I listed. This deck also needs heals if you're in a longer fight, so I've also listed down here Pumpkin Queen or Baleful Bride, Fenicula or other Fennec cards, Ovi, Yessa, and Flameheart. I won't be showing all of these cards in the videos, but hopefully this will help you build up your team using some examples I'm going to show. I'll actually start with a deck that I use to get really quick MVP or 15% damage against smaller bosses. I've got two Admiral Applewood and one Bacon Baron. Baleful Bride can be replaced with Pumpkin Queen and Domi just because I have multiple relics for the Fire Honor event. Just swap the Power Gems as soon as it's done and then you can see that you'll be able to deal enough damage, in this case actually 2.8 billion, to be able to take out bosses really easily and really quickly. So the idea behind this deck is to bring in enough relics that can spawn power gems and taking advantage of the Baleful Bride's passive ability to maximize the number of power gems on turn 1. You don't need two copies of the support card, just any two or three of the cards from this event will work the same. With this type of setup, you can safely enter bosses and get 15% damage with one key so you don't lose your solo keys, which I think is quite helpful. Now let's move on to other decks. For this one, we'll use Volcanic Quildrak to take advantage of his passive skill that spawns power gems every 3 turns and use two copies of Domi to add more gems on the board. With this setup, you'll want to build up power gems, so if possible, let the Quildrug passively spawn gems twice. You won't really need a lot of honor relics to power up Domi, since the cards passively generate intensity anyway. Now because I'm trying to preserve the power gems, in between the spawns, I try to match the fire gems, so I will have an easier time to do non-fire gem matches and save the power gems. It's kind of a toss-up though, because with this event's cards, the more Fire Slayer intensity you can build up, the more damage you will deal. And you only build up intensity by matching Fire Gems. In this deck, I'm only building 15 Fire Slayer intensity per hit, so I didn't focus too much on that. Instead, I'm focused on the second passive spawn from Quildrak. Once the second spawn takes place, the order of activation matters. I activate Domi first, then Emerald Applewood. Always activate him first before Bacon Baron because you will lose damage if you do it the other way around. With this setup, it's able to deal close to 80 billion damage on the first shot. It's not fast, but effective. Next, I'll show you how Thoth can be used alongside Flameheart. The nice thing about using Thoth is that you don't need to worry about intensity and can use her every 3 turns to generate 5 Power Gem 2s. Now we're up against a Cobalt Guild Boss, so heals are going to be needed, and that's where Flameheart comes in handy. The only issue is that with a single Domi, you won't be generating as many Fire Gems until later on, but this deck can still deal pretty good damage over several turns, you just have to do some quick gem matches and build up the Honor Intensity. Once your health starts getting a bit low, activate Thoth first, then Domi, Emerald Applewood, Bacon Baron, and Flameheart last. Actually, as long as you activate Flameheart after Admiral Applewood, you should be fine. You just want to take advantage of his battle skill that increases the recovery of Fire Slayers, and you can see that she can heal fully. That first attack dealt about 20 billion damage, so there's still a ways to go, but that was also with less than half of the board matched. As you build up both Fire Slayer intensity and also Honor intensity, the hits will start to get harder and you will deal more damage. Just remember to always make off-gem matches to stop the clock and use Flameheart whenever you need to. So the second and the third attacks both dealt over 40 billion in damage. The final attack dealt over 60 billion and the final damage output with this team is 180 billion over 20 seconds with only two event cards. Now personally, I actually think that Quildrak is a better choice for building the decks in this event because you are guaranteed to get 6 power gems every 3 turns and you can choose to save up the gems or match them. If you don't have Flameheart, you can also use one of the Fire Fennec cards if you have one since they heal for 500% recovery and can be pretty helpful as well. By saving up the power gems and with the Relic's passive gem spawn, the initial hit dealt about 70 billion damage and Fenicula was almost able to heal fully. 
Now, if you don't have any of the cards I've talked about so far, but you do have Infernal Squall or the Master Collection card version Ignis Souza or the cards that I personally don't have, Vladim or Mitra, they will work as well. They work a little differently, but can still help you get some really good damage. In this example, Infernal Squall works by destroying gems and creating power gems based on the number of gems it destroys. I also brought in Pumpkin Queen in this team as the other card to heal as well. It doesn't quite heal as much as the Baleful Bride, but could help you survive a couple of extra turns. With this particular setup, it's still capable of dealing close to 60 billion damage in a single hit. For the last team that I'm going to show, I'll be using three cards from this event. I'll say, if you already have the Bacon Baron, it would be a worthy investment to get a second support card if you have the gems. The damage boost is effectively doubled, and you get really good damage as well. Now if you have Alex, you probably are already using this card. So I'm going to show what this deck is capable of using Alex and Soul Thresher. Now with two support cards and one relic, you will be able to de generate 25 Slayer intensely as long as you have 5 Slayers on, this, on the team. It'll take at least 4 turns to reach 100 intensity for the additional damage boost. Keep in mind that you have to attack in order for intensity to build, and missing matches means you will be taking more time to deal damage, so for the purpose of getting damage quickly, you don't need to wait for the intensity to reach 100, but I wanted to show the damage on turn 4 here. I'm using 3 special relics, so when I activate everything, I won't have a full board of power gems, but with a simple power gem match, it was able to deal 208 billion damage by turn 4. Skipping for 7 turns. With only 20 billion remaining, I wanted to see how much more damage I could do, but I didn't quite match the fire gems during the turns, so my slayer intensity remained at 175. However, even though I didn't get the additional boost here, the added power gems from Alex and Soul Thresher allow me to deal a combined total of 693 billion damage. It would have been even more if I waited until the slayer intensity reached 200. So needless to say, this is currently my go-to team for the event, and hopefully if you have a card similar to Alex, you are too. That's all for today's episode. I don't have any other cards from this event and can't forge Contessa until tomorrow, so hopefully what I showcase today is helpful. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.